Back on the airfield, the valiant chosen to carry the weapon is towed to the bombing up apron. She is all ready for her cargo. Canvas screens have been placed around the aircraft for security purposes, and behind them the bomb doors are opened and the weapon hoisted in. Bombed up, she is under close guard throughout the night. Sunrise on the 28th. Engines are starting on the airfield as Shackleton's prepare to take off on weather flights and on sea searches. Inside the operations center, all aircraft are plotted in their positions around Christmas Island and in the test area. For every aircraft has its own predetermined position in the sky. 170,000 square miles of the Pacific have been searched continually for days to make sure that no unscheduled ships or aircraft are anywhere within this area. It is a monotonous job, but an essential part of the operation. All aircraft must be in the air to avoid blast damage. The Shackletons have already left, followed by the Canberras, four of which have been briefed to take samples of the class. Radar at X site tracks the aircraft towards the target area. The weapon is now falling. Minus 20 seconds. Unobscured records were obtained of these early stages by the cameraman in the Shackleton circling the target area. The fireball is now beginning to cool and the mushroom stem develops. An ice cap is gradually forming.
so that the crew can disembark without contamination. The samples are then removed from the wing tip nacelles and placed in special containers. These will be taken over to a laboratory where they will be cut up into sections, some for analysis in the labs on the island, the remainder sealed in shielded containers. These are then taken to a Canberra aircraft standing by to take off. The samples are flown back to England for radiochemical analysis at Aldermark. Helicopters carry re-entry personnel to sea site for entry into the forward area. Fires are still burning in the vegetation. There weren't many fires, but some broke out, particularly where old leaves had piled up at the base of isolated trees. Light aluminium sheeting at forward camera positions was twisted and torn from the frame. Radiological measurements team are recovering records from containers in the instrument lane. D site, the nearest to the target area and the most heavily damaged position. These columns carried instruments which measured effects during the first few microseconds of the explosion. Note the sandblasted effect on the metal and the way this metal sheet has wrapped itself around the support. Behind the shelters at D site, this ventilating plant and generators suffered some damage. This generator was badly damaged and was thrown 30 feet from its original position. Sandbags used in the open as retaining walls and unprotected by cement washing have been burnt by the heat flare. Removing them is a worse job than putting them in place. In the JOC area, the radiochemical laboratory measures fission products in the sample. Specimens are placed in a gridded iron chamber and pulses are analyzed by the pulse height analyzer. Group leaders must complete interim reports before leaving for home. The end of a trial is always a rush, reports to finish and equipment to store. Back in England, the data will be analyzed and the results assessed to provide information vital to the continued progress of research and development.